Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the Instantly AI Web Visitor feature to automatically and make track people who check out your website, have a look at what pages they see, enrich people from that company to figure out who to get in contact with, and then use GPT to craft a personalized outreach based on who they are and what they were looking at and what you do to make sure that you're hitting people with conversations when they're hot and interested and also with information that they're actually gonna be interested in. So this is a new workflow I made because the web visitor tool is quite recent from Instantly AI. Um, also, there's no API documented for it, so I had, to do a lot of, uh, I had to do a lot of trial and error looking at the inspect element of their page. And this is the flow that I've managed to put together. <clears throat> so at the first stage, what we have is a call that goes to Instantly. We can run this every hour, every two hours, every three hours, it doesn't really matter. What it would do is it will give us a list of the people who have been checking out our site. So we have an example here. Uh, I have ID and I have the business email of the company. So obviously all web visitor tools, it's not gonna tell you who specifically was looking at your page, but it'll tell you a company. And then from there, the idea is you can say, all right, I know my ICP. I, know, I for example, am interested in marketing managers. So I can say, I need to find marketing managers at one and one get in contact with them and say, hey, you, someone from your company was looking at my website, what can I help you with? So this is the information already, which is pretty useful to me, the business email of the company who was looking at me. And also here we have the domain of the company that was looking at me. We also have the number of visits. Uh, we have the timestamp of the last visit. And we also have here the web page that we're looking at. So again, I use school, I use Gumroad. Uh, principally, so I had to make a fake website, upfish.live-website.com. Uh, so if you check that out, there's nothing really interesting there. It's something I put together in like four hours over the weekend using Divi, just so I would have something to test it on. Uh, but it worked. So somebody from One and One, well, I say it worked, that One and One is a uh, this the provider, they host my website. So obviously someone from their uh, IT department was checking something out. It doesn't matter though, it worked for our purposes. So essentially here we have support One and One, somebody from the company was checking us out. All right, so at this stage, after this, I run that information through an iterator just because you might have more than one person. Hopefully you have more than one person looking at your website. So we go through the iterator to separate all of these results. And then it comes to a text parser function. So what this does, it looks at their business email. So in this case, it was support at oneandone.com. And it just gives me the domain, oneandone.com. All right, at that point, we need to know who it is we're talking to. So you're gonna get a lot of people on your website who, for example, are uh, people you've already reached out to. So if you have an instantly.ai campaign, for example, and you're reaching out to a thousand people a day, you have this air table, if you've been following my channel, you have an air table of all the people you've reached out to. So what we have here is a simple search. We look through the contacts and we try and find anybody whose company website matches the domain we found. Because what that will tell us is, is this someone who has already been on a campaign that we've contacted for some reason, whether it's through email or LinkedIn or some other kind of campaign? Is it someone there's already an established relationship with? So if it's someone we've already spoke to, what I've done is I've set up a router to say, okay, this person exists in my Airtable. I don't want a GPT follow-up. I want it to be manual because it's someone I've had a conversation with, they've checked out my website. Instead, what I do is I send a Slack message to myself in my sales channel to say somebody from this company looking at the website, that lets me hop into my CRM, grab all of my meeting notes, all of my docs on this particular contacts, uh, figure out the best person to get in contact with manually with all of the information I have from my meeting notes. Now, hopefully it is the case that a lot of people looking at your website are not ones who you've already enrolled in an outbound email sequence. In a lot of cases, it might be people who have checked out your YouTube channel, for example, or your LinkedIn posts or your blogs, or they've done a Google search or a friend has spoken to you to to them about you. Either way, you're gonna get people who aren't in your cold CRM coming to you. So what we have here is a simple filter which says, all right, no one exists in the Airtable. So what do we need to do next? Well, I make a call to Apollo. So I make a, pick, a mixed people search and I map in the organizational domain I found from the text parser. So what it would do is it will say, imagine someone from Microsoft was looking at my company. I'll say, all right, find everybody at Microsoft who is an owner or a founder or a C-suite or a partner, VP, head, director, manager, and they work in the department or sub-department marketing or sales and just find me two people. So for example, let's just say somebody from, yeah, I said Microsoft, someone from Microsoft was on my page. This is the information that will go in. It will put in their domain, microsoft.com. It will run it. 
And then in the body, I will get two people, Jack R, who's a marketing lead, and I'll also get Takeshi N, who's executive vice president, chief marketing officer. Obviously, if your ICP is people like Microsoft, then you're gonna to want to adjust the, this API call you have here to, to Apollo. Because if you're targeting people like Microsoft, you don't want to be targeting the owners and the founders. You're probably going to be looking at like heads of departments or managers of departments. And obviously, if you're you know searching for people, if your ICP is finance, you would change it from master marketing to master finance, whatever. But the idea here is that we don't know who was looking at our website, but we do know the company. So if we can find an ICP at that company. That's brilliant for us. So I asked for two. So I have an iterator just to go through these results of the people so I can separate the two out. And then provided that they have a name and an organizational URL, they get sent to find email. So at find email, I can use that full name, I can use that website, and what it will do is it will give me uh, the information of the person. So if I use myself as an example here, I just to say I've, I've been on your website, so it comes up, all right, George Woodruff was on your website, this is his uh, website URL, it will run it, and it will get the contact, and it will say, all right, his name is George Woodruff, this is his email address, this is his domain, his LinkedIn URL, job title, uh, so I've confirmed the email address. I have some extra information, but it's not really necessary because in Apollo, I get all of that too. And then provided that the email exists, it moves into the next stage. So I have a GPT assistant, it's called my cold email assistant. And basically this assistant has a vector store where I've already uploaded my, you know, my value proposition, my pricing, my services, my products, who it is I work with depending on their industry. So I just got to map the information I get from Apollo, like their name, their website URL. I could also add in things like uh, industry here, or um, depending on what I do, their departments, their market cap, anything that I get from Apollo, um, I can add in here to make it a, a more dynamic prompt. So I'm basically saying, hello, someone from Upfish or Microsoft was looking at uh, a specific page on my website. So I map it to the URL I get from instantly API call. So I say they're looking at this web page. So again, for my fake website, I just had a landing page, but imagine that you have, for example, a product page and the product page is called like um, content marketing for software companies. Then it will be like, okay, so based on the website, the industry the page they were looking at, figure out why they could benefit from exploring the topic they researched, use my value proposition doc, my pricing doc, my product docs to make it more accurate. I give it an example email of, hi, someone from your company was looking at my company website recently, specifically my page about blah, 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 blah. I don't know obviously who was looking at this page, but I imagine you're interested because, and then this is the GPT crafted reason. Uh, I'd love to schedule a call with you to discuss it further. Uh, perhaps you can tell me who is a better person to contact regards George. I tell it to output it as a JSON. All right, then it goes into just the normal GPT where I'm asking it turn this message because you see here this result, I get that tilde, tilde, tilde JSON. It's very annoying. I know you can um, set up this system to output JSONs, but then you have to really dive into the coding element of it, uh, which I think is beyond most people who watch my channel. So it's, it's not for beginners or even intermediates. It's a little bit more than that. So as a workaround, I tell it, go into the chat completion. Here is the message, turn it into the valid JSON in this format, subject email. Then it goes into the JSON parser. So I get the JSON string with the messages. Um, so here's an example, boost your marketing efficiency. All right. And then after that, it comes into my Gmail. So again, you could use instantly.ai's reply to email function, a little bit complicated, or you could just send it to any kind of emailing tool you have. But because I want this to come up, go out immediately, and because I know the messages are different, and I know the email address is valid, I can send this from my principal email address. So if this was you, it might be like your head salesperson or a special principal sales account. But we just say, all right, send it to the email we found in find email. In this case, it was george at upfish.co. Put in the subjects I got from passing the JSON and put in the email I got from passing the JSON. So then that would just send the email out straight away. So the big advantage here is that hypothetically, you know, someone was checking out my website, they were looking at a specific page, and depending on how often I run this, every hour, immediately almost, I can figure out someone at that company to email, I can use all of the information I have available from Apollo and Find Email and my website to craft a very specific message to them, to be like, hey, uh, you were looking at this page about market content marketing, uh, because it draws on my vector files, it'll be able to see my services regarding content marketing, the people I work with, and it will say, all right, because you're Microsoft, you're interested in content marketing, I'm, I'm assuming you're interested in me because I'm just a magnetic and charismatic screen personality and you want to sponsor me to do some YouTube videos. Who do I need to talk to to make this happen? Okay, and then it does its work of passing the JSON, turning it into things, and then sends it out in an email for me. 
Now, again, this is something I put together quite quickly because the, uh, the instant uh, web visitor function is quite new. And again, there's no API documented for it. So I had to work around for it. Um, so I put this together. Obviously, if I was working on this harder, what I would probably do, I would set in another GPT to basically assess the, the company. And then I might say, based on this, is it worth me reaching out? Because it might be a bot or it might be, it's, again, in this particular case, all right, if I run this module again, Okay. Or in this particular case, as we see, it's my, it's my website host. So I don't really need to send them a cold email. So you would have perhaps a GPT classifier. It would say, or you could even run the domain through perplexity, for example, ask it to analyze, give you information on the industry they have and, and what kind of services or products they might typically buy. And then based on that, you could say, all right, should I pursue this or not? And then, and then if it's a non-pursue, just ignore it and the workflow. And if it's your GPT mark says, yes, this is an opportunity, then the flow continues. So that's one possible customization I definitely recommend doing. Another one might be to basically change it on the number of visits. So you'd have a filter here to say if they visited just once, you know, send a, put them on a different campaign. So instead of using GPT to construct a personalized email, you might have a campaign flow already in instantly of just people who visited your website or your so right, someone visited once, put that on that email, they'll get three just random emails or whatever. And then if the number of visits equals two, three, four, five, six, anything more than one or more than two, then this kicks into place. You remove them from any existing, you remove all of the contacts from the existing workflow and you just um, send out the GPT crafted email or again, a Slack message where you say, all right, this person's been on my website 20 times now. Let's um, send a message to assign someone a task to follow up manually. So again, it's a pretty simple workflow, but it's a really cool one because it uses the instantly API for website visitors. And this is available on my school. So if this is something that interests you and you just want to use this as built, just join my school page. The video is up there with the JSON um, plus information on how I construct the, the email. There's also going to be on my Gumroad and it's also part of my solopreneur pack. So if you're just getting started in a company, starting from day zero and you want like a mature marketing and sales funnel pre-built, I have a collection of the most important automations you need as a solopreneur, plus all of the templates and guides and how to's of how to set up the infrastructure and backend, which um, I think is pretty important. So again, really hope you like the video. Like, subscribe, comment, tell your mum and dad, unless you don't have one, tell someone else you quite like. All right, thank you for watching. Goodbye.